Uh, my next big guest was a big name in the comedy clubs but wanted more and decided to take the plunge and book London's massive O2 Arena. It paid off as pre-sale tickets sold out in just 12 hours. He's one of the country's most promising comics and I'm thrilled and a bit bloody jealous to have him on the show. <laughs> Please welcome Eddie Caddy. He's here. <laughs> Eddie, 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 what, what made you, what possessed you to choose such a big venue? So I could end up sitting next to good old Tim and Christopher. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that, that was the idea. Oh, so is that why you did it? <laughs> no, but you know, um, I've been doing comedy for a little over five years now. Oh, and um, that's gradually, a whole career. That's, yeah, yeah. But um, gradually, I've kind of just taken big steps. Um, I never intended to become a comedian. I was at university, you know, and one day we decided to do a showcase and all my mm -hmm. mates said, you know what? Eddie, you've got something. So once I finished uni, I thought, let me continue trying to do some stand-up. What were but you then, studying at uni? Media technology I was studying. Oh. Yeah, I had to go uni, you know, African parents. I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I, I, remember saying, I remember saying, my dad saying to me, so what do you want to do? I had some good GCSE results, uh, really good. So, you know, a bit big-headed, I thought I would pick some good subjects. And my dad said, what do you want to do now? I said, well, dad, um, you know, I'm going to do college and then maybe try football. My dad looked at me and said, hey, how about I send you back to Congo? <laughs> So that's how it made me go to university. Because <laughs> yeah. your, your early childhood was miles away from the O2. Oh, yeah, it? yeah. I was born in Congo. Um, in the Congo? Republic, in the Congo, yeah. <laughs> DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, Central okay. Africa. And I came to the UK at the age of eight. So, um, you know, it, it, was, it, it was one of those countries, as most people would know, uh, a lot of war for about 30 years, you know, and then we had the Civil War. And you can imagine, you did not know when the next gunshot was going to happen, really. Uh -huh. And I spent half of my time, you know, in the few years that I was there, kind of just staying up to make sure the family you know, was, were alive. So imagine, fall, you know, here you can fall asleep. In Congo, I had to sleep like this. <laughs> and the worst thing about it, you couldn't even blink. I had to kind of use alternatives. I would blink with my lips, blink with my nose, not with my eyes. <laughs> So, you know, that, that, that was me for eight years in Congo, but yeah, I came to a peaceful place, London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when your auntie came here from the Congo, the drinks cartons were a surprise, weren't they? Lenny, you know what? I don't blame her. I, I remember when I first came to the UK, I was excited seeing new stuff like escalators, you know? Mm -hmm. um, in Congo, you kind of had to help yourself. I'd be like, escalators helping me? What? <laughs> you know? But my auntie came and uh, we went to the supermarket and she saw carton drinks for the first time and it was exciting for her. She was like, I can't believe they put drinks in cartons in Congo, we just, you know, they use bottles. This is exciting. So she wanted to get everything. She took the, 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 oh, the apple juice, orange juice, pineapple juice. She said, Eddie, just put them all on the trolley. I want to take it home and experience this new England. So I took it home and I came downstairs and I saw my auntie doing this, you know, all very excited. And, you know, she's singing along saying, oh, carton juice, carton juice. So, Auntie, you're getting a bit too excited. Then she goes, no, Eddie, come on, let me enjoy. I said, no, Auntie, seriously, that's a bit too excited. She said, like, Eddie, don't be silly. It says shake well before you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, so, yeah, that, that, that was Auntie. She's never stopped since. She's lost a few pounds as well. <laughs> I need to do some shaking as well. Now, have you been watching the World Cup? Yes, I have. I, uh, I, I, I love the World Cup, you know. Uh, obviously, my country is not really performing. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not in it. <laughs> so, you, so you kind of seek alternatives. But it's interesting, it's interesting. And uh, I remember going, uh, going to Nigeria a while back, and it, it, football in Africa is just something special. People, yeah. you know, especially when it comes to celebration, we've seen all, all types of celebrations. Uh, and I remember watching a game of football. I went out there to film uh, a short film. And during the break, I remember watching a game of football. And this guy scored a goal, and to my show, Shock, literally, he got up, like he scored a goal, and then he got up and he was doing the head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And he's doing it, like, I couldn't believe it. I said, how, do you, how does he know about head, shoulders, knees, and toes in Nigeria? I approached him yeah. and I was like, excuse me, um, how do you know about the head, shoulders, knees, and toes? And he kept going, this is not head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I'm like, no, it is, it's from England. So that's from England. He said, my friend, no, this is Nigeria. You must check for your belongings every two seconds. <laughs> So, you know, that, that, that was um, uh, 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 a little warning there. Brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, he's at the R2 on the 4th of September. Let's hear it for the very, very funny Eddie Caddy. Very, very good. Excellent. Really, really good. <laughs>